Hello, how's it going? Uh, welcome to episode number four. Uh, I apologize, I happen to be in the room that is the worst acoustically uh, that I've ever been in. I mean, I, I guess I didn't realize it until I started recording the video. Anyway, uh, in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about finger rolls, how to, how to do finger manipulations. Uh, whee! Uh, and all, all the good stuff that sort of comes along with it. Um, and I'm also going to be covering a little bit of, of the principle uh, that is known as fixed point and, and why that is so, so important to uh, the, the form of dance known as liquid and digits. Um, so anyway, uh, this stuff these are called finger rolls. I think that's sort of the agreed upon term. Um, I'm just going to show you how to do it. Mechanically, obviously, it's kind of a no-brainer, right? I mean, like, your fingers just kind of do this, and they kind of do that, right? Uh, that just takes a lot of practice to be able to do it really quickly. Uh, so, uh, what I did when I started learning was I basically put my hands I should do it this way. Okay, so I put my hands like this, and then I went like this. Now this is actually, this is really hard for people who, <laughs> who don't spend ridiculous amounts of time doing this. And I can't blame them because when I started it was like, are you crazy? This is a totally, nobody in their, Nobody, you, this is a skill you don't need in the real world. This is a skill you don't actually uh, have for a variety of good reasons. Because, you know, why would you need to do this with any object you're manipulating in the real world? Anyway, so, uh, the way that I, I mean, I just sort of trained it, I guess. I, what you usually find is people will do this, right? Or they'll just do some sort of weird combination of that. I mean, those are kind of cool and you can work that, you can work that in right, uh, down the line, but you should start with the fundamentals, which is have an open hand, uh, open two hands, put them together, and then go from one index finger to the other, other index finger. Uh, I wouldn't go this fast at first. I would just start, you know, take my time. If I need to stop because I'm gonna accidentally do this, then you need to stop, and that's totally cool. And then go from pinky to index finger. Um, I think what, what, when I watch people, I think what goes on is you, you you're trained most of your life to use your hands uh, in, in opposition to one another, right? Like this, and therefore when you go finger to pinky first on the right hand, your intention, or your, your muscle memory tells you, oh, I should do the exact same thing on the left hand, and you try to go finger to pinky first here. You need to break through that and say, you know what, no, nope, I can't do that anymore. I need to go finger to pinky and then pinky to finger. That's what can create the solution. Now that is the pure muscle memory aspect of this, and you can involve thumbs if you want to. Um, that is a pure. I'll be right back. I'm thirsty. Uh, that is a pure muscle memory aspect of how to do this thing. Just, just practice. Um, but I'm going to give you a few tips as to. Well, a after you sort of just practice that a whole bunch, you can start playing around with a bunch of other random, cool iterations of that including folding only at this joint on your fingers, right? And going across all, all eight of your fingers. Uh, you can... Uh, you can sort of, instead of going only in one direction, you can go in the opposite direction. Uh, and then you can also... Let's see, here's one. Mm -hmm. And then this one. I mean, they, obviously, you know, there are a lot of um, permutations that are available to you to play with. Um, but I'm going to first teach you a... Uh, I'll, I'll go over a lot of those permutations and sort of one of the cool principles that I learned uh, from a friend, uh, June, uh, a.k.a. Dad. Um, uh, and, and but before I do that, I just want to go into another way that I taught or that I was taught this aspect. It was sort of after the fact, and actually, when I learned about it, I was kind of pissed off that nobody 
taught me how to do it that way in the first place. And I want to teach you how to do that in the first place. So the idea is, um, if you're doing this, you can just rope muscle memory, sort of force that activity into your fingers and, and figure out how that works, right? But and the, uh, another way to think about it, you know, earlier I said that we actually, there is no uh, natural reason we would want to do this. And I think that is a lie if you, if you want it to be a lie. I, what I'm saying is like, if you want to pretend that there's utility behind this behavior, uh, then that can actually accelerate uh, your learning process. And, and to be more specific, because I know I'm, I'm not really being specific here, what I mean is, God, this lighting is awful. <laughs> what I mean is, uh, there's this thing called fixed point. Um, and my understanding of this sort of dance style with these fingers and stuff, uh, there's a story, I, I'll, I'll try to link to it in the description of this video, there's a story uh, of how this dance style sort of was born, and the idea was that there was this dude who was bugging out on drugs, hanging out in a club, and he was just like playing with his fingers, right? And he had this, he was like, he imagined this object, uh, this like sphere, like right in front of him of energy, or I don't know what it was, and, and he just imagined passing his hand through it, right? So I'm going to do it in this dimension so it's easier to see, or maybe, let's see, I'll, I'll pass my hand through this one. Right, so that's kind of cool. So I, obviously you can see that I'm like imagining that there's this ball here. Oh, the AC went off. I don't need to yell over the AC. Okay, so, and, and this, is, this is what fixed point is, that there's this point in space right here that is like significant to my imagination. And as I pass my hand through it, it somehow transforms my hand, right? If your imagination is that strong, if you can imagine a fixed point in space and you do your hand across it and just watch the permutations occur, you're going to naturally do this like these finger roll things, right? But most people actually, I, I've discovered from explaining to people this, this thing, they, they don't actually, uh, they're not completely that strong because there's, it's a little bit more confusing because you're doing this lateral movement. So what I do instead is I teach people to say, look, put your hands together and instead of imagining your hands passing through a fixed point, imagine a fixed point passing through your hands. And it's a little weird because fixed doesn't move, I guess, but it's still the same concept. A fixed point is just something that, you know, that really is grabbing your attention and just, you know, I mean, you don't even need to use your hands at first, just imagine it moving through space. This is a really exciting YouTube video, isn't it? Okay, so now just place your hands in between <laughs> the two places where it moves from and to, and as you watch the thing go across your fingertips, you can slowly close your fingers, right? Uh, it might be easier to limit the fixed point from here to here so that when you're going across, you can really just focus on each individual digit uh, as it goes across. Now this sort of, you know, once you do this more and more, that is a good way to ingrain muscle memory, is by, by ingraining the muscle memory with, with your imagination, like having your imagination be the impulse behind the behavior, as opposed to just, I don't know, my pinky to my other pinky. You know, like, like it, having a very clear understanding as to how this illusion works really defines, uh, really defines the shape and defines the movement. And then when you do that, you know, if you want to stick that thing in a fixed point, then you can start doing your hand across the fixed point, right? Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, so right now I'll, I'll just talk about some of the other, all these permutations, right? So 
if we just look at one finger in isolation, because this one finger is really what you're iterating with across all your fingers, right? Uh, there are many things that your finger can do to get from here to here and everywhere in between, right? So <laughs> let's, let's take a look at some of those things, right? There's full closure, right, which is what this finger is doing right now. It's completely closed. There's this thing right here, which is like a 90 degree angle from, from here. Uh, there's full open. Uh, there's also just the knuckle being completely closed or being completely open. Some people can do this like 90 degree knuckle thing, I think. I'm not so good at it because my, my fingers always want to go down. But, um, and then there's this also this like bend backward thing. Uh, and then some dancers can also bend ridiculous far back, right? And there's a lot of play here between all those things. So those are just the positions you can take. Um, but you can also just imagine it instead of one, like counting all your positions, you can imagine drawing circles with your finger in this direction and drawing circles in this direction, right? Once again, drawing this way and drawing this way, right? Uh, and then there's also, uh, well, there's just going up and down here, there's going into the 90 degree and up, there's also going all the way down and up. And then there's also, so this circle thing that you're doing, this is actually going all the way, it's folding in like this, see that? Going from straight to 90 to closed, and then going from closed to like back and out, see? So close, close and open. And you can do the opposite, obviously. So after you, is my time up? No, my time is not up. I just have someone in the window, uh, just, anyway. Um, so after you do these things and you, you sort of get these things in, in your brain, uh, check this out, right? There, there are four permutations that your hand can undergo. There are, there's four basic roles. I think these are called roles, um, which is when your index finger is leading and you go out to in, like that. Index finger lead, out to in, right? That's what that looks like. Index finger lead, in to out, like this, right? Pinky lead, out to in. Pinky lead in to out. Right. Uh, and when you get really good, you can start doing like, so. I struggle with those words, uh, and I wish I were a little bit better with them, but, but the reason is because when I'm doing it, I don't actually think, okay, pinky in to out circles. I just have it as sort of this shape that my hand takes because I need to translate that shape into the other hand, you know? Uh, another way to say that is when it's not pinky and then finger I, or, or pointer, I, I typically think of it as this side and this side. And, and that distinction is important because if I say pinky every time I do this, then I'm going to start, then when I want to translate that to the next hand, I'm going to probably want to go pinky to, to index, right? So instead I go, I go my rightmost side to my leftmost side. And then I would go in to out, or whatever, right? So you have those four, and they do these really, there are all these really crazy combinations that, uh, that you can get involved with that if, if you're doing opposition here, you sort of do like, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'm not doing a really great job of explaining it, but basically if you have this going on, but split up across the dimension of depth, right? So instead of in to out, you're just thinking counterclock, or I'm thinking counterclockwise. I don't know if that's gonna look like in the video for you, but I'm thinking counterclockwise, hands facing each other. And then I'm gonna start with the index fingers first, right? <laughs> it's, it, uh, yeah. Um, so, th that's a lot of crazy stuff, um, but 
I'm going to get back to this whole thing about fixed point, right? Like, fixed point is like the only way you can really manage complexity is layered simplicity, right? And so this whole thing, this crazy shape that I'm making not so well, <laughs> uh, it's just a variety of small, it's just a, a bunch of things that are put together, right? There's this one thing that's like this counterclockwise motion that each digit takes, right? Everything just sort of goes in this way. There's this other dimension of from index fingers to pinkies, or actually from most closest to me to furthest away. That's, that's, the, um, uh, that's the definition of how I determine which individual digit fires off. So you could think of this fixed point sort of going away from me and the motion, and as it passes through space, everything, it makes everything just sort of go like this, right? Um, but, I mean, what's really cool about that is if you, if you really, like, dissect them up like that, that means you can, um, instead of having this plane pass through space, you can have your hands pass through this sort of, like, track, right? Oh god, I can't do that other way that well. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, the, the, to, to sort of take a step back away from, from these roles for a moment, um, and to talk more in big picture of the principles of fixed point, I mean, it's, you know, it's evident in all the other work that we've been talking about, uh, you can have this figure eight across a fixed point, and you can move that fixed point around just really slowly. Um, there's also, I mean, if you think about what a wave is, it's basically all you're doing is you're just taking a fixed point and you're passing it through your body. Uh, but you can also move your body through said fixed point for different effects, right? Um, and the same could be said, you know, the, this, this, this thing here is when your hand runs through that fixed point uh, versus you know, taking that fixed point and squeezing it into or through your hands. Um, it's also important when you're doing rails to have, obviously these like pivot spaces uh, are going to be really important. The, the, the clearer you can define them with your imagination, the better it is. Uh, and I, there's another thing that I want to say is that like, I've been, I've been like working on cleaning up my tots a little bit and what I realize is that there are times where I'm messy and I'm just sort of being um, lazy. That's what it is. And I'm sort of just like, I, I get to a point where I, I, I just hit this and I'm just like, whatever, I'll just, I'll just stay with this like weird 45 degree angle in my tut, even though that's like sort of against the whole reason that I'm, I'm like engaging with this tut thing. So this whole, all, if you really define a disciplined approach to your fixed points, uh, especially, especially when they're inconvenient, right? If you have this fixed point that is right here, and and you're doing something around it, and it just it makes the rest of your body like have to really do weird contortions around it, you better believe your audience really knows what that thing is now, right? I mean, it's like there's obviously a really important aspect of your movement around right here because you can't seem to let it go, right? Um, so, so it is. It, it takes a lot of um, experience and discipline to say, okay, this like thing that my my this fixed point right here that my brain is hung up on that needs to stay right here, and I'm going to do whatever it takes for the rest of my body to really like illustrate how in, how significant this thing is, right? Um, and I'm going to make it a really big deal when all of a sudden I'm able to say, or let's say, to like, right? Like, I, I'm going to make it a big deal when, when I decide to take it and uh, move it elsewhere. Okay. 
Um, so, uh, I think that's sort of all that I wanted to cover with these guys, and it's a slice of what I wanted to talk about with Fixed Point. I, mean, I just want to keep talking about that stuff forever. But yeah, the, the more inconvenient and annoying it is to your body, um, the, more, the, the more it bends your cleverness and your ability to say, how do I, how do I get there again? Like, how do, I, how do I solve being wanting to move my right elbow all the way up here um, while maintaining this fixed point, right? Like, when you start thinking about spatial problems like that, you, you come up with lots of really crazy cool stuff. Uh, so, you know, define a rule set, make it inconvenient, right? And then, then you, you sort of, it gives you enough creative friction uh, to sort of, uh, to, to come up with, it gives you enough creative friction to like start moving in a, in a particular direction um, and, and really like, it's, it's this self-imposed constraint that you can use to uh, define some really cool illusions. Um, so yeah, that's it for this week. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. If you want to know more about these, or if you think I didn't cover them well enough, or yeah, hit me up, uh, and I will uh, get back to you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Peace.